Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to Magna Steyr. We're here in Graz, Austria for, of course, another video. And this time I, I heard about this truck and I said, oh, we got to find a way to make a video with this. This truck is fully electric. It was adapted from a diesel combustion truck and its job in life every day, all day, except on Sundays, I'll explain, is to bring body and white Jaguar I-Paces from their production plant across the street over to the paint shop. So I-Paces, electric Jags, of course, are transported on the electric truck. We're gonna talk about how this was made, some of the intricacies of it, how they charge it, how it works within the production line, and uh, just a fascinating piece of equipment and really helps reducing CO2 as well. We can't, <laughs> we can't show you anything that's going on over there, but I promise you it's really fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna give you a quick tour of this truck, then we're gonna talk with one of the engineers behind it, and then we're gonna actually go on its production loop. We're gonna go pick up I-Paces later on in this video and bring them back over here to the paint shop. But uh, this is the company that did it, I think, Framo, and they, uh, they're the ones who did this conversion, I guess, to electric. But essentially, it was just a normal combustion truck, like you see over here, just driving around. And, um, from this, they said, okay, well, we want to reduce uh, carbon emissions at the factory, especially for electric vehicle production. This was all Magna who, who decided to do this, not necessarily JAG. And um, they said, yep, let's, uh, let's make this electric. So walking you through, essentially all the same up front, silent drive, of course, but here's the cool bits. If you come back behind the cab, you'll see four onboard chargers. Each can do 11 kilowatts. Three of them are operational at one time. If one fails for some reason, then the fourth comes in and uh, that's just more of a backup. So 33 kilowatt charging, AC only on this one. Uh, the battery pack is not huge. It actually doesn't need to be because this truck only drives about two kilometers round trip and it has charging on, uh, charging on either points. So it really only needs one kilometer of range. But it, with this, it actually gets, seems to get about 86 kilometers, 87 kilometers of range according to the screen. And we were nearly full charge and I'll show you this in a little bit too. If you don't look right now because there's a car going by that we can't show you, now you can come look. Uh, there is uh, this cable that comes down, this black cable from the trailer. And that's because the charging port is on the back of the trailer. And it's just a little type two cable that goes in, which is really, really interesting. So under here, you have your motor controller, you have your, uh, your, your electric motor that powers the truck. The transmission's pretty much gone, but it still has drive reverse. Interesting things with uh, electrifying sort of these uh, combustion trucks is you need just a regular uh, air compressor to run the air brakes on it. So it has an auxiliary uh, power output that builds air pressure. So the brakes still work. If you come around back this way, they've of course put grass on here because it's green. And um, I don't know what any of this says but it says something, and I know Magna over there. You guys know Magna. You've seen us do all these ads with Magna, right? Now we're finally getting into the good stuff to show you all these cool things. Um, coming back here, this back end of the trailer actually articulates to help with parking, which is really interesting. And then this is the charging system under here. And if you take a look uh, in the back, we actually just delivered two I-Paces, which will come at the end of the video, which was just fascinating. But if you look under here, these, these little pins, and they're really, really tight. But this is how it, it charges with these uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten pins in the back. And um, if you walk in this way, these are the garages that the truck backs into. So essentially, uh, there's an identical one of these across the street at the body and white shop. See, the, thing, the interesting thing about the Magna Steyr facility is a whole bunch of production lines lead into one shared paint shop between five series, uh, G wagons, etc. Uh, they all come to one, Toyota Supra, Z4, etc. There's a whole bunch of cars that are built here. The I-Paces needed a new production facility across the street, so this electric truck solves it. And I-Pace isn't like the most volume vehicle, so it's okay to have this truck in the middle. Um, I guess we'll start up front. There's a garage door here that can come up or down with the truck inside, which is great. And I think it helps keep the dust out of the vehicles themselves. This is the whole communications system for the driver in the truck. So when he backs up uh, and we met the driver, we're gonna go for a drive, it's awesome. It goes through all of these processes, trailers open, charging started, et cetera. It tells you how long you've been charging. Uh, the truck itself operates around 400 volts. Again, AC charging only, about 86 kilowatt hour battery pack usable. They try to operate the truck between 20 and 80% every day. Although sometimes overnight they do full charge it. And because we were here today, they full charged it. 
uh, the truck has to back into this extremely narrow situation. And so it gets really, really close to these pins. And essentially it gets locked into this sort of handbrake, if you will. So it comes here and, and then stops. The back of the trailer, or you know, the, the, the ending bit, these are the charging pins. They slide into here. It's totally custom for this. You can't really buy this stuff off the shelf. What's interesting is the same company who designs the conveyor belts, who runs the conveyor belts, makes this equipment. They've modified it into this situation because the back of the truck becomes part of the conveyor line system. And so they said, hey, we already power our conveyor lines with this technology. Let's just adapt this to the truck. This then gets fed through the trailer into that type two cable I showed you into the onboard chargers. And it sits here for about five minutes or less charging at again, peak of 33 kilowatts goes into the truck and then it does its loop again. If for whatever reason there's a malfunction with this, they can still get three full shifts with the truck on its remaining battery charge. And of course you can just plug it into a wall box and I'll show you that plug here in a little bit. And we're also gonna do this whole process, but yeah, you back the truck in, slam it in and it's super, super seamless. It is one of the coolest freaking things ever. So walk with me back over to the truck because I just wanna show you a couple things. We have to look nine different directions here because not only can we not cross the street, I can't show you any cars ripping around. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of cool stuff going on. So we'll keep you looking this way. Uh, again, charging in the back, typical trailer, nothing crazy special on the outside of the trailer, but again, Right, to they, the right. so to fit it in the garage, the whole thing, the truck and the trailer had to be shortened so that it fit perfectly in the garage. So totally adapted, but you know, wouldn't look like anything special on the outside. But the conveyor belt line, the whole traditional production line is integrated inside of this truck. It's essentially a moving uh, part of their production line system. Come on over this way, of course, it's all registered because they have to drive this on public roads too. And if you look in here, this is the type two charging port for the battery pack. So if either some of these situations, uh, you know, stop working for whatever reason, then uh, they can just charge it up manually, which is great. Um, what else should I tell you about it? I think that's most of the things. Let's talk with one of the engineers and we'll talk about how this is integrated into a system, what he thinks about it, um, you know, what, what they would change, what they want to improve and why we don't have more of this going on. This is the first of, I assume, many to come. And then we're gonna go for a ride and actually go pick up some eye paces. It's gonna be awesome. I'm just walking into the garage with Gerhard. Thank you so much for taking the time to show you're us welcome. around. This, your, your truck that you use is really incredible. Yeah, it's a one of a kind. It's uh, the first time we use this technology for our logistic department. So first electric truck. First ele electric truck, yes. It was our, our first project. Uh, we approached it in 2017 mm -hmm. and we started with uh, Go Live in 2018. Wow. 2018. Yeah. And uh, now that you have this one truck, does this, is this the only one you use? Is this running well, all the time? No, we're using uh, two trucks. One is a backup. We have a, also the similar trailer okay. as a backup. And uh, the third truck we tested for uh, half a year from MAN, but that just was a prototype. Got it. A serial prototype. But they're all electric focused. They're all completely electric, yeah. Wow, how about that? And we that? have some LNG trucks uh, from Graz to Horchen. Oh, for the Using LNG trips. technology yeah. there, yeah. And what do you think about electric technology for the short haul around factories? Uh, my personal guess is that the elect electric technology is the best, guess, is the best choice for, for short distances. Mm. For very short, as we have here now, just one, two kilometers or warehouses in a, in a distance of 25 kilometers, the electric truck is very suitable for that. And you don't and even need big batteries for this. You know, don't need big batteries, you don't need big charging right. facilities, and uh, you, you can install uh, the charging everywhere. Yeah? Right. It's not a problem. And a big charger, supercharger means a more power grid than everything else. Right, and yeah, so if we all needed high power chargers for long yeah. distance, right. this would be very expensive to do. But relatively, this is very similar technology to what you use on the production line already. Yeah, of course, of course. Could you show us how this all works down here? Yeah. So the truck backs in. The, the, the truck comes in and at the back of the truck, uh, you find some, I, I call it uh, the fingers, the connecting fingers. Yeah. And the connecting fingers are sliding into these rails. And when they are connected and everything is in place and the truck is catched here with this stopper, uh, the, 
the current can flow into the into the trailer and from the trailer into the tractor. Right, that is really cool that you have this flexible cable yeah. down into the onboard chargers. That was the idea behind it to combine the logistic process, the loading and unloading of the trailer and the charging process. And this way the driver doesn't have to get out and plug that, in that's and the unplug. Idea. So, so can, you can operate in three shifts yeah. only with changing the driver. And That's you don't amazing. have to have uh, extra time for charging. Yeah, the so the thing is always charging, basically. Yeah, it's, it's... And and with this process, you must have learned a lot because it's been running for years now. Yeah, uh, the first thing we would change, we would do this again. Uh, the connecting fingers, if you can imagine, fingers are very fragile. Yes. And especially in winter days when you have snow and ice and, oh. and rain and freeze, uh, the connecting fingers we would change into a, a rod, yeah? okay. some kind of rod. Uh, that we're connecting it with, with uh, more, it's more flexible and more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, so the connecting fingers are a little bit... Uh, Not great for connecting, disconnection yeah, with yeah, dirt and yeah. slush getting now in Now we have summer, we have good conditions, it's no problem, but in winter yeah. we have some problems, we have yeah. some issues with that. Yeah. Yeah. And the second thing we would change is the floor. Mm. Uh, we would give the trailer more freedom to move. We would uh, put more sliding plates. Right, so these are sliding plates, this, right? These, so are, these are sliding plates. So, so if he hits one of these railings, it can move. Yeah. The, the railings are pushing, pushing the trailer in the right position and, and, uh, and, and the wheels can move over the sliding plates. Yeah. Uh, we would use more sliding plates and also some, some sliding in, in, uh, on the side so yeah. that the, the trailer is moved more, more gently, more yeah. smoothly. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And um, in terms of the, the daily charging of the truck, do you charge it? Uh, like, does the factory run 24-7 or how does this work for charging? Uh, the factory is working uh, two shifts or yep. three shifts. It depends yep. on the, the amount of, of cars we're producing. And uh, the, the trailer or the, the tractor will be charged on Sunday the whole day. So Sunday it sits and it yeah. top balances. Sunday is balancing time. Yeah. Right, yeah, because this is one concern I had, and we spoke about it before, yeah. is like with all these short charging sessions, you must get this sway. It gets confused, yeah, basically. Yeah, of course. So um, Sunday is the time he has rest, yeah. and he can, he can balance, more or less balance all, all the cells and, and the batteries, okay, on right. Monday, and we start with 100% state of charge. Yeah, and we're already still at 96% today, I noticed. <laughs> yeah. And so the truck's still quite high. And you saw the consumption is not so high, right? And it's it's enough it's enough uh, power going back on each docking station. It's pretty yeah. incredible. So only five minutes, even at twenty or thirty kilowatt charging, is enough to make up for the you know five minute drive yeah, at ten kilometers yeah. per hour. And we think that's the key fact, and that's 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 the key to success. You have to combine logistic and charging times. Yes. You, you can't put a truck four or five hours. On the, on the side, right. charging it. So you have to use it the whole day. Right. So, and, and that's the key to a success, we think. And so other things other than this charging situation, is there anything else you would improve on this concept of using an electric uh, The charger? process itself, it's, it works fine. It works yeah. really perfect for us. And uh, just a, a few things, um, maybe some minor things in, in, uh, on the conveyor itself. Uh, and then the door and then the communication. Yeah. Uh, we have a Bluetooth communication here between oh, okay. the truck and the door opening. That's when he hits this button in the truck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So the Bluetooth is, is telling this, the docking stations and now we are coming, be ready, yeah. uh, power up everything. Mm. And uh, yeah, with the communication, we would do a little bit more uh, more details in that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, I can't thank you enough. That's really great thank information. You very much. And I think now it's time for me to go in the truck and we're actually going to go pick up some eye paces. So you're about to join me now on a shift in the electric truck. Here's the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. I'm hopping in. <laughs> this is great. Oh, we got a juice booster right here, which is awesome. And here we go out for a cruise. It's so silent, no noise. Yeah. Really, really quiet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's the rest of the crew. See you guys. <laughs> so off we go out the factory and then we're gonna head across the street to where the body and white for the Jaguar I-Paces are. We're gonna pick up some body and whites and then bring them back over to the paint shop so they can become whatever color customers have ordered. And the gate is opened. And now we are out on the public road. Can we try some acceleration, some schnell? <laughs>
and just cruising down the road in a silent electric truck. Really, the only thing you can hear is the compressor for the air brakes, and it's pretty quiet once we're moving. So I think we're heading over here to this factory. We're gonna back into a gate, hook up the charging pins. I think it happens automatically. I'll show you that process, or maybe I have already. Wow, this is something very special. So cool. Oh, he's got the gate to button. And then this will open the garage. Ah, so it's a remote garage door opener for this. And it's the same looking uh, garage as we have on the other side with the same green pins. Okay, so let's see how this guy backs this thing up. We've got a trailer with an articulating pin. Oh, this guy's got it. <laughs> Threw it into reverse one right there proper reversing skills, something I don't have with a trailer. Look at this, he's getting it right in on the line. We're at pretty high state of charge, 85 kilometers. We're at 96% state of charge at the moment. So we have some lights here. We have this 400 volt situation, trucks in. Yeah. So we're in park, neutral. And then over here, oh yeah. Yeah. Now it's charging. Yeah. It says something start. You push this, get garage closes. Oh, and now it's now it's actually charging. Wow, so we are now locked in the garage. In the back, yeah. Okay, let's go out. And now we come this way. Oh, and this is where the the cars are getting loaded in. How about this? Is okay? So over here, they're coming to get picked up. We have it charging just under here, right here, which is great. There goes the pallets. The truck's pretty much part of the production line now, which is really cool. <laughs> here comes some I-Paces. I-Pace number one being loaded into our truck. There it goes automatically as part of the conveyor system. So cool. And all the while, it's charging up just under here with these pins. Here comes the next eye pace. This is one cool system. Gate closes, car comes in. This is someone's eye pace coming down. Nice. How many? Three? Three can fit? Three. Two. So we have two. Yes. And then the garage will shut as the cars have come in. So you can see that closing right there as this garage opens. And now it's time to go. We've charged up, I guess, a little bit. We're in the handbrake here. This is very cool. And then I'll hop back into the driver's side and climb over. Oh, yes. Perfect. You can pick me up. <laughs> Amazing. So now he's going to pull out. So we've charged up. I think we were at 96% when we got in there. Again, charging at 30 kilowatts. There must be a taper. So that's the air compressor kicking on now. <laughs> the air brakes are going. And then here he comes very silently. And there we go. We have two eye paces loaded in our truck right now. We've just done it. I assume this will close here behind us. And I'm gonna hop in and we're gonna head back over across the street to the paint shop so that they can get painted. Back out on the road we go, this time with two eye paces in tow as we make our way over to the main factory, just over this way. What a perfect application we have here. We are at 96% uh, still, so it must chop charge pretty slowly because we're almost full, but that's okay. Pretty, pretty sweet. Love this solution. And apparently, even if you don't have any charging capabilities, this can run for three full shifts without recharging, and then you can just charge it up on a regular level two wall box. So as we approach the gate, we have this right here, which is an automatic scanner, and it will raise up the gate without us having to do anything just by having this right here. How about that? Now we're back into the factory. <laughs> with our eye paces in tow. I have to be careful because I can't show you everything going on here, but I don't see anything I can't show you right now. 
There was a whole bunch of cool cars, prototypes and stuff rolling around. Some charging for the workers over here, BMW iX3 on this side. Coming in, what's interesting about this facility here at Magna Steyr is there's a whole bunch of different car production lines. They all share one paint shop. The iPace needed to be off-site in a new facility to be produced. And so that's why they're using this electric truck to reduce emissions, to bring the vehicles from the body and white facility over to, of course, the paint shop. We're arriving now around the bend here pretty soon. I can see we're probably going to have to make a left turn. This is going to be a tight one to back into. So we're going to see how he does this. So now we're getting the truck in over here. This is sort of where we started. And now it's time to back us in. So into reverse. And here we go. Our turn to back into the loading bay here. All looks good. I don't want to block his mirrors. Getting into the spot, nice millimeter perfect, dead silent in here. Great throttle control, of course. He's just inching on the throttle and it's so smooth. No motor cogging, nothing crazy. Just super duper smooth as we back in here. <laughs> as we come on down the way, we again have the same screen over on this side, which is great. So you can see it recognizes two vehicles inside. It knows that we're starting the process. Yep. Super, thank you so much. And now we're charging up at 10 kilowatts. It's ramping, we're at 95% or so right there, 84 kilometers of range. In the winter time, it's a little bit less, but again, you only need two kilometers or so. Time in, this thing is awesome. Is it? This guy backs in with like perfect room. I saw it. Yeah. Very yeah, and we're juicing up. That was perfect. A huge thank you to Magna for taking us out in their electric truck, seeing the production process, how this is literally a part of the production line, electric forklifts going by. I hope to see, it's just really loud around here. I really hope to see more electric vehicles factored into the production process here. And of course, we'll be making videos here over the years to show this with you as time goes on. But there it goes, our electric truck. What a machine, absolutely a lot of fun. Thank you.